And we're back, everybody. So let's explore Grelia Fortress a bit. See what's here. See what's cool. <laughs> See all the tanks and armored vehicles. Seems like this is the hangar. Seems like this is the hangar for tanks and armored cars. It's kind of staggering to see so many of them lined up in one place. <clears throat> I'm not entirely sure how to feel seeing so many oxens lined up like this. The Reinford Company makes these, don't they? Unfortunately so. I'm sure they'll be using them for this military exercise too. As far as I can tell, they'll be pitted against the older automated models. And that sounds pretty brutal. The older tanks won't stand a chance. Well, that's kind of the point. <clears throat> they want to show off just how easily the Oxens can dominate them. <laughs> well, you don't get the chance to get eye to go eyes on with this stuff every day. I'll take the opportunity to see for myself just how competent they are. <laughs> that's just like her. <sighs> I'm not looking forward to this. <clears throat> You've never seen any military exercises before, right, Reen? Yeah, this will be my first time. I take it you have then? Yeah, my dad showed me one last time he brought me here. He really does want me to join the military, but I really don't think I'll ever be able to be suited for it the way he is. I get where you're coming from. The more I hear about his dad, the more curious I get. <clears throat> what they say, Reen, curiosity killed the Reen. God <clears throat> <coughs> oh, dang. Oh, are you taking a rest, Emma? I did take a short walk around, but everything about this fortress is so imposing. It made me feel a little faint. <laughs> I feel you there. Looking at Emma now, it's hard to believe she's the same person who almost single-handedly guide us, guided us through that castle. Green? Nah, never mind. There is one thing that's been bugging me lately. Ever since we arrived in Legram, I feel like just out of the corner of my eye, I catch glimpses of the small black shadow following us. But ever since we got to the fortress, I haven't seen it. R really? <clears throat> maybe, maybe you were possessed by something. Possessed? Yeah, that's kind of an unsettling thought. It is, isn't it? Well, I'm glad I told her to go back when we reached Celtic. <clears throat> Yo, instructor! Oh yeah, Toval gave me a call about what happened in the Gram. So you had a mechanical monster show up outside the city limits? Yeah, Toval looked pretty concerned when we first mentioned it to him, too. Do you know anything about them? Well, I'm no stranger to the group that makes them. They go by the name Uroboros. They're a secret society of sorts that acts in the shadows all across the continent. Hmm, where have we heard that name before? Oh, could it be Trails in the Sky? <clears throat> A secret society. <clears throat> we don't know how many members there are, or what they're capable of. Honestly, we don't know much about them at all. What we do know is that they have access to technology more advanced than the most cutting-edge research institutes, and that they've been behind several crises that have threatened to, sh to shake the foundations of the entire nation states. <clears throat> God dang. And these are the people who made those monsters? If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I'd find it hard to swallow, but there's no denying what we saw out there. <laughs> well, you don't need to come to grips with it just yet. We call the mechanical monsters like the ones you guys fought archaisms. And lately, it seems an awful lot of them have made their way onto the black market. There's been one sighting after another these days, all over the Empire and beyond. Wow, that's... heavy. Does that mean there's a chance they might be plotting something here in Erebonia? Just in your opinion, I mean. Well, that's the tricky thing about them. It doesn't necessarily mean that at all. There have been cases where we know they put archaisms out into the wild purely to test their abilities, for example. Still, it's something to keep in the back of your mind, at least. Right. I'll be sure to let the others know, too. <clears throat> so, those so those mechanical mayhem bringers are archaisms. <clears throat> hmm, I'd heard about the fortress from my father, but seeing it in person really drives home its incredible scale. Yeah, your father helps train the Imperial Army in swordsmanship, doesn't he? I can see why he's so busy if he's going around training all the soldiers in places this massive. 
Indeed, I feel like the reality of it is finally sinking in for me as well. I have no idea how his teachings are actually being applied, though. Perhaps we'll have the opportunity to find out during today's military training exercise. I'm looking forward to it. <coughs> the soldiers here are pretty well trained. Pretty well equipped, too. Like you'd expect from the Empire's biggest fortress. You'd need to put in some serious prep time if you wanted to topple it. Uh, Fee? I'm not sure that's something you should say within earshot of the soldiers. <laughs> Old habits die hard. Oh, Fee. You're tiny and adorable and great. <clears throat> hmm, so you're the students who have come to Tora the Fortress. Yes, sir. He's wearing an officer's uniform. I wonder if he's... <clears throat> this is Lieutenant General Walter, commander of Grelia Fortress. He also serves as the division commander for the 5th Armored Division, which is stationed here. Ah, I apologize for not greeting you sooner, sir. Thank you for granting us the opportunity to tour the fortress. It really is an honor. Hmm, well, at least you aren't lacking in manners. Hardly built like a soldier, though. <clears throat> I have my doubts that you'd be able to endure the, mil the military's training regiment with a physique like that. You sure you're training them properly, Major? My apologies, sir. Though I hear the Academy has a former bracer as their combat instructor. They must really be scraping bottom. <clears throat> I've heard of the Purple Lightning before, of course, but a bracer is still a bracer. Leaving such an important role in the hands of a civilian is ridiculous. The famous Thors isn't what it used to be. Well, no surprises here. It's like he fills in every box on the checklist for stereotypical Imperial Army soldier. Anyway, as Fortress Commander, allow me to welcome you to Gorelia. Keep in mind, though, that we're constantly on alert for potential threats from the East. I have no problem with your class conducting your field study here, but see that you don't get in the way. Of course, sir. Very well, I'll take my leave here, as I have business to attend to. <clears throat> yeah, this fortress is huge. Both in scale, scope, and story relation. Oh, he's certainly strict. Well, he is responsible for keeping one of the Empire's most vital defensive fortifications running smoothly. <clears throat> Considering the ongoing tensions between the Empire and the Republic, you should be grateful he allowed you to come at all. I won't forget it. Now, I'm afraid I must excuse myself as well. You're welcome to tour the rest of the fortress, but don't try to enter the command center. Of course, good luck with your work, Instructor. I'll see you later, then. Instructor Major Neidhart. Alright. Get on the straight platform and check it out. Barracks? Nope, can't go to the barracks. I went to the motor pool. Like, I gotta find Machias and Uses. And Milliam. I feel like. Looks like this is the fortress's airport. They might come. <clears throat> there might come a day when I find myself in a military airship. <laughs> Crazy, it really is night and day. Yeah, it's hard to imagine two places more diametrically opposed. What's wrong, you two? Oh, we're just talking about how different this place is to Jirai. Jirai was super lively, but this place is. I think Crow's having withdrawals now that he's somewhere without easy access to a casino at all times. <laughs> I can imagine. It seems like everyone's talking about Jirai these days, though. Was it really that amazing? It was. I didn't know what to expect with the recent annexation by Erebonia, but everything looked fine to me. It has offices, an entertainment district, and of all people I saw, and all of the people I saw were thoroughly enjoying themselves. <clears throat> I'd go as far to say as they're happy to be under the Imperial government's control. I don't know if I'd go that far. Oh? A little bird told me Chancellor Osborne was the one behind the annexation in the first place. It also told me he used some pretty forceful tactics to get them to agree. And of course, most of their tax money takes a brand new detour straight into the Imperial government's pockets. I wouldn't be surprised if he made the annexation happen just to fatten his pocketbook. But paying taxes is a citizen's duty. It's only natural that they do so now that they're under Erebonia's protection, right? Sounds like this is a pretty complicated issue. <laughs> Like, they might be under Erebonia's protection, but... Who is Erebonia protecting them from? Hmm? Uh, 
the real question. Yeah, freaking chapter, like, the story's pretty heavy, like, it starts off relatively slow in chapters one and two, in chapters three, chapter three, you start to see a little more cracks in society, chapter four, you get, you start seeing a lot more of the political opposition, and some behind the scenes stuff in chapter five as when the story truly just picks up in in a huge manner. I can't believe the size of this place. Oh, given that uniform, you, you must be one of the students from Thor's. Feel free to look around all you like, but try to stay out of the way. We're all incredibly busy at the moment. So if you don't mind, I'd ask you to make your way to the corridor over there instead of hanging around here. Understood. Thank you very much. Might as well head over there. Oh, I completely forgot about Gaius. Gaius, are you okay? <clears throat> I'm just kind of shocked by how different the atmosphere here is from Zender Gate. Well, it is a major military base right on the border of Crossbell. <clears throat> I never imagined it'd be quite this big, though. This place is such a departure from Zender Gate that I can hardly believe this is the same military. Although, perhaps this is the true face of the Imperial Army. This fortress is the very definition of oversized. And that's ignoring the excessive display of military power. I imagine that the posturing is meant to show the Kreutzen Provincial Army that they could crush them on a whim. I forget that this place probably... I forgot what this place probably means to you and your family. I suppose. While I don't agree with my father's actions, I can't say I'm comfortable with this fortress's presence either. In fact, I find it hard to believe that anyone could sleep peacefully near a fortress like this. Yeah. Aw, oh, I guess you can't see it from here after all. We'd be able to see it from where the railway guns are, but they'll get mad if I get too close to them. What are you up to now, Milliam? You know that huge Orcus Tower where they're holding the trade conference? I'm trying to get a good view of that. Oh, yeah, they mentioned it in the Imperial Chronicle and down the radio. Can you actually see it from all the way over here? That'd be incredible. Would I ever lie to you? I wish I could have gone with Gramps instead of being stuck in some stupid field study. Why'd you join Class 7, then? Speaking of which, they're going to be holding the keynote session there tomorrow. I wonder what they'll be talking about during it. Most people are thinking it's just so they can decide the finance rules and stuff for Western Zemiria, but I think it's really going to end up being about who Crossbell belongs to. Knowing Grams, he might even try to get Crossbell to become a part of Erebonia. Seriously? <laughs> the prince is going to be there too, so he'll probably just try to shake everybody up a bit. <sighs> Unbelievable. Toa's there too, though, so here's hoping things go well. All right, that should be everybody. I don't know who I'd be missing. I'm gonna enter the command area. The bulletin is to inform all Thor students that preparations for today's military exercise are now complete. Please assemble in the hangar immediately. Your transport is standing by. I repeat. That's Instructor Nightheart. This, the time must have passed more quickly than I thought. I suppose I should start making my way toward the hangar. Maybe I'll run into the others on my way. We boarded the armored cars and set off toward the proving grounds. Like I'm not again. I'm not usually a big fan of political stories, but this game does it. Like, this series does it incredibly well. I think it helps that they add in some, like, supernatural fantasy stuff, too. <clears throat> the inside of the armored cars was narrow and cramped, and the smell of machine oil hung in the musty air. 
The car shook and rattled all over the uneven ground, tumbling us around like an iron coffin on wheels. Eventually, after enduring ten minutes of jaw-rattling travel, unable to even peek outside at the scenery, we finally arrived at Grelia Fortress, mi Fortress's military proving grounds. Australia Fortress Annex. Military training ground. No. Wow, Oxen main battle tanks. There are plenty of older model tanks out there too. It even looks like they have airships here. Oh yeah, like the ones we saw in Nord. Welcome. Oh. That's Elliot's dad. I don't see the family resemblance. Looks like the hair made the jump from father to son, though. Reporting, Lieutenant General. Very good, Nightheart. And Instructor Valestine, I believe, pleased to meet you. It's an honor to make your acquaintance, Lieutenant General Craig. Allow me to extend my deepest thanks for agreeing to cooperate with us for our Academy's curriculum today. Think nothing of it. Many of these fine youngsters may one day hold positions in the Imperial Army, after all. Besides, I owe a lot to old General Vandick. Ah, and these must be... What a piercing stare. So this is Craig the Red. Um... Elliot, my boy, it's so good to see you again. Huh? It must be half a year now since I last saw you. How have you been? That's a sharp-looking uniform you've got, too. I've seen the photos, but it looks even better on you in person. Dad, come on. <laughs> you've still got a long way to go if you want to put on some real muscle. There's a part of me that hopes you'll stay my little cherub forever. But you're a man of Erebonia, and the men of the Empire must be strong, stout, and ready for action. It was for your own good as a man that I held back my tears and enrolled you in the military academy. Dad, I can't breathe. Uh, I feel like everything I've been told about him was a lie. There do seem to be some differences from the stories. You kidding me? He seems like a cool guy. <laughs> what a delightful commanding officer you have, Major. Words fail me. Dad, knock it off. I'll tell Fiona. <laughs> <laughs> um, moving right along. Lieutenant General Olaf Craig. Craig the Red, Master of Bastards. I'm Lieutenant General Olaf Craig, Commander of the Imperial Army's 4th Armored Division. I've been entrusted with the role of overseeing today's joint military exercise. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Likewise, sir. It's a pleasure, sir. You've got one heck of a dad, Elliot. Believe me, I feel it in the bones. <laughs> now, let me give you a brief rundown of what will be happening. This exercise will consist of a simulated battle conducted by two of our armored divisions. Armored regiments at the formation center, infantry armored car, infantry armored cars, and airships will work in tandem, using their maneuverability to the fullest to obliterate the targets. As our targets today will be using the previous model tanks that have been decommissioned from service. Autopilot functionality will allow them to evade and return fire, but they've only been armed with paint bullets. However, all other regiments taking part in today's exercise have been equipped with live ammunition. So you intend to actually destroy the other tanks? Ha! Huh. It would hardly be a live fire exercise if we didn't. The current time is 1400 hours. Right on schedule. I mean, I guess. We'll now begin today's joint military exercise. Armored Divisions 4 and 5 commence combat operations. Glory to the Empire and the Imperial Army. Begin! Yes, sir! 5th Armored Division. Armored Regiment will advance first. Armored Car Regiment and Infantry Regiment follow their lead. 4th <clears throat> Armored Division. Armored Regiment and Infantry Regiment advance together. Armored Car Regiment deploy to the left and right.
the oxygen tanks are crazy powerful. Wow! It's certainly potent. So this is the kind of firepower it takes to fight a modern war. You said those tanks are called Oxens? Yeah, they're a type of main battle tank the Radford Company developed two years ago. <clears throat> I've seen their spec sheets, but seeing their power firsthand tells you what numbers and decimal points don't. They might be the strongest heavy armor tanks on the continent, and the Imperial Army's got a couple hundred of those in the wings, huh? That's kind of crazy. You try fighting things like these things head on, you won't stand a chance. That's as true of our own nation as it is for others. <laughs> I just can't get used to this. Just the sound of the artillery firing is enough to make me start shaking. I don't think that's something you should get used to. I mean, if the sound of guns and warfare ever stopped bothering you, I'd be worried. Lean. I guess this is another kind of strength. Yeah, an overwhelming, brutalizing kind of strength. <clears throat> Thus, the military exercise came to an end. <clears throat> the 4th Armored Division, led by Lieutenant General Craig, withdrew to an encampment near the fortress. Meanwhile, we returned to the fortress, where Major Nightheart outlined the results of the training exercise. After that... Sleepy time. Sorry you had to wait for us to finish. Don't worry about it. We're the guests here, after all. Thank you for your consideration. At the very least, I'd say dinner's a million times better than lunch was. I mean, it's hashed beef day. <laughs> That's an Imperial Army tradition, isn't it? Oh, just the smell's making me hungry. Oh yeah, where'd your instructor go? She's a real looker. I was hoping to get a chance to talk to her. She went to see the fortress commander with Instructor Nightheart. She did ask us to eat without her tonight. Alright, well... If she's with Major Nightheart, it's hard to compete with those guys from the 4th Armored Division. It'd be enough if they just had Craig the Red, but, they got, but they've got the Major, too, and he's kind of scary. <laughs> like a division of muscle men. <clears throat> anyway, we shouldn't keep you tied up any longer. Your hashed beef's gonna get cold. See you tomorrow, guys. Wow, it's actually delicious. It's like night and day compared to what we had for lunch. You're telling me. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. What's with all the gloomy faces? You think you think you guys might have had a... Had a blah, blah, blah. You think you guys might have had a bit too rosy of an outlook? What were you expecting to see out there? I'm sure you can understand at least a little of how we feel. It's like, has everything we've learned in our time at the Academy been for nothing? Academics, the arts, individual skill in combat... None of those matter in the slightest in real warfare, do they? It's true. If all you're looking to do is fight a war, you don't need any of those. All you need is plenty of troops at your command, the latest weaponry, and overwhelming firepower. Assuming you know the tactics to use them well in a strategy that employs them effectively, I suppose. The Oxens are even more powerful than I was expecting them to be, too. I remember my mother boasting about their capabilities when she was trying to sell them to the army two years ago, but to be honest, I'm feeling somewhat disheartened as well. I can't share the I can't see there being a place for swords on the battlefield with weapons like those on the front lines. Well, I don't think that means individual combat skill doesn't matter at all. Still, I think maybe we've been misunderstanding something important all this time. What we saw in that military exercise today was power in its purest form. It has no, mora it has no morality of its own. It exists to bring about a result, regardless of the ideals or principles of those who wield it. That's true. In a sense, the same could be said of a sword or a gun. And all the way up to something as huge as Gorelia's railway guns, too. I think I finally understand why they wanted us to watch that military exercise in the first place. <laughs> they could have taught us in a less roundabout fashion. Well, looks like you didn't wait for me to start the party. You told us not to, Sarah. Instructor Sarah? <clears throat> so you spoke with the commander? 
Sure did. I got up-to-date info on the trade conference, too. As well as all the latest on the terrorists. So there's new information about the Imperial Liberation Front? Anyway, before I get to that, let me explain what you'll be doing tomorrow. In the morning, you're scheduled to, to participate in the Imperial Army's physical fitness training. In the afternoon, you'll be attending a special lecture where I'll bring you up to speed on that info I just mentioned. After that, you'll be, you've will be you been granted special permission to view the railway guns. I see. Looking forward to that. Sounds like we've got a pretty packed schedule. Well, we did bring you all the way out here, so we might as well make the most of it. Every nation possesses power in the form of a military, whether that military is large or small. Corellia Fortress just happens to have that power in a very striking, easy-to-understand form. As students of a military academy, you have an obligation to know the scale of that power. The Empire of Erebonia wields at present a power you might one day be in charge of yourselves. What? <laughs> anyway, even a meeting that long couldn't keep me away from trying the famous hash beef rice. I've heard it's the only decent food they have around here, so I've been looking forward to this all day. Sorry, all out. We should probably finish eating. Yeah, though it's gotten a bit cold now. Maybe I'll go ask for seconds. Oh, oh, useless. If you don't want the rest of yours, can I have it? I'd sooner throw it away than give it to you. Useless, don't be a brat. Okay, that should do it. Alright, that covers today's quota. Whew, I'm looking forward to a nice, long bath. Well, you know how every time there's a military exercise coming up, the workload gets pretty crazy like this. Still, at least managing inventory has gotten a lot easier thanks to the Orbal Net. They've got everything hooked up on the network over in Crossbell, right? Wish the Empire would get on that a bit more. Think of the utility. Well, from the sound of it, you need special equipment to send signals through a wired connection to make use of it. And considering the size of the Empire, it's probably going to be quite a while before it's a widespread thing here. Huh? An orb mail? Looks like it's from HQ. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. This right here is the problem with the orbital net. There's no such thing as off hours when they can just send you orders around the clock. Huh? What's going on? So get this. They're planning on doing some extra exercise tomorrow. That means we got to outfit 20 accents with C units by tomorrow. 20! <laughs> Seriously? Might as well start up another pot of coffee. We're in for an all-nighter for sure. Do we even have that many C units left? Actually, another lot came in by freight just this morning. Exactly 20, if you can believe it. Guess we'll just have to get it done. Crap. At least let us take a shower. I'm going to head down to the mess hall and grab some snacks. You want anything? Alright. This is a perfect chance. Perfect stopping point for the video. Tomorrow, special exercise time. Tell that everybody.